If I remember correctly, I think I was 16 years old when I bought my first interface. Actually, my stepdad bought it for me. Thank you for if you're watching this, you're probably not watching this. I remember being 16 and figuring out that this thing was going to allow me to put microphones on my whatever I wanted to put them on, drums, of course, and take that high quality audio and funnel it into my computer. So for anyone who's not familiar with what an audio interface is, it's essentially the modern way to capture audio, to record audio. We used to use tape machines and record to tape. Now we can use audio interfaces and record to files. Now fast forward 14 years later, I've used a ton of audio interfaces. I've gone from home recording to uh, recording school to internship to working at a commercial studio for five years. I've actually worked in a lot of commercial studios and then a private commercial studio and then ironically back to home recording. Through all of those studios I've gotten to use audio interfaces that have built-in mic pre's to just a to D, D to A, converters, everything in between. Which leads me to now. So when I invest in something like an audio interface, I'm not thinking, oh, this'll be good for now. I'm thinking this is something that's expandable. This is something that's gonna be able to grow and develop and constantly be updated and stand the test of time and make my life easier. <laughs> So in this video, I'm not only gonna talk about the Apollo Access, but also how I use it now and as I build this studio that I want long term, how this will be the perfect system for it. Also, Universal Audio just put out the API Vision console release for Luna, which really ties into this whole conversation as to why this to me is the sleeper of all the companies. And because I'm such a fan of Universal Audio, I reached out to them and I got them to sponsor this video. They sent me over the Apollo X16, so I'm gonna grab that and unbox that and we'll get into it. If you get as excited as I do about audio interfaces, <laughs> Smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more of this kind of stuff. Okay, let's get into it. Three things I'm opening today. I got power, this, well, we all know what this is. DB25 cable for the Apollo. Shout out to Greg Glazer. Thunderbolt 3 cable because the Apollo X's, I think, don't come with the Thunderbolt cable, but you need Thunderbolt 3. This is the Apollo X16 and it is the Heritage Edition. So this is not my first Apollo X interface. The first interface that I got was the Apollo X8P, and then I upgraded to the X4, and now this is the X16. So I now have a total of three Apollo X interfaces. The first two that I got, the X8P and the X4, I wanted because they have built-in mic pre's. Now this interface has no built-in mic pre's. So the point of this one is to expand my collection of outboard mic pre's. Finding a good system that makes sense is always a little tricky. The way to plan a patch bay is to make the labels first and plan the labeling and then connect it. The normaling is a little tricky. So now with this setup, I'll have my Apollo X8P, my Apollo X16, the X4. So I'll have a combination of 12 built-in mic pre's and then I can expand to external mic pre's and external outboard processing. I started with the X8P. And the reason I started with that is because I'm a drummer and I wanna be at least be able to plug in eight microphones. And then I added the X4 because I wanted four more of the unison mic pre's. Now, basically what Universal Audio did is they created fantastic emulations of historic vintage channels and preamps. Funny enough, after I bought the X8P, it took me a long time to really discover how much you can do with it. The big ticket for me discovering that was learning how to use the software that comes with the interface called console. In hindsight, this all seems so straightforward. Console is a software version of a console. Because this is a single rack space unit, all of the preamps and all of the controls are mostly in software. That's where the real fun is. Now you can control everything you need to control from the front, but there's so much power inside console that I just didn't know about. It's so funny that it took me so long to discover, but the first Unison preamp that I started using was one that came with the interface when I bought it. It's the Universal Audio 610 
channel strip. So essentially what happens is if you're not using a unison pre, if you just plug a mic in and you just turn the mic pre up, it's gonna sound great. It's gonna sound transparent. It's gonna sound clean. It's gonna sound good. But if you want to add a little color to the chain and you wanna change the behavior and you wanna have a little more flexibility, you can choose one of these unison mic pre. For instance, I'm using the Neve 1084 channel strip right now as a unison preamp on my dialogue mic, which is right here. It sounds great. And it behaves just like Neve 1080's four channel strip would. And it's great because I'm familiar with all of these frequencies in the EQ chain. I'm familiar with the behavior and the, the gain staging of the preamp. They've done it with consoles, preamps, EQs, compressors, guitar amps, bass amps. They've done it with pedals. They've done it with old effects units. Now, one of the cool things about using their plugins, which are one, just fantastic, but they're not processed by your computer. They actually offload the processing onto the interface with DSP cards. In each interface, there are dedicated DSP cards that do the processing of their plugins and of their Unison Pre's. And being able to offload that from your computer frees up your computer to be able to process everything else, which keeps things moving smoother when you're working. And I, all of this, everything that I do for my work, for my studio is designed to make the actual process of getting in there and doing it smoother and more fun and sound better and be more easy for me to not be bogged down in, in any of the technical stuff, but be more focused on the creative music side of it and make sure I'm capturing what I want and getting the sounds that I want and not having to worry about, oh, there's too much processing or this or that. That's fantastic. And between the three of these interfaces, there's a lot of DSP cards. <laughs> so the next thing that I absolutely love is that they decided to make their own DAW. So the software is called Luna, right? And there's a bunch of really awesome things that I'm excited about. One, it comes with the Apollo X. So if you buy the interface, you just have it and you don't have to pay every month or pay, you know, of upfront fee. As far as how it actually works, the behavior of how it integrates in with the hardware, with the plugins, with console is so freaking rad. It just makes using all of this stuff even more fun. So I'm not gonna go too deep into Luna because I've actually made a video. If you wanna watch that, I'll link it down in the description and I'll put it right here. If you wanna check that out, I produced a whole song and then I sort of reviewed Luna when it first came out. But I will mention you gotta hand it to Universal Audio because these guys have an update for the software every time I go to open it. <laughs> there's, hey, the, there's a new update. We've added this, we fixed this, now this thing works. Gotta love that. Not a lot of the software companies are sending out updates like that for free. Again, free, plus updates all the time. So rad. So at the end of the day, it's not the plugins, it's not this, it's it's everything. The low latency monitoring, the ease of the just making my life easier. Let me show you. Just we'll just let's just do this. So let's take a look at the drums here. I went ahead and cleaned up the toms a little bit. Let's see, I'm using the API Vision Console on everything. This is the mix window. You can see each section of the mix window is sort of in these little tabs. You have your inputs. You can see which inputs are going to which inputs on the interfaces. And then you can see you have this utility section here, which has phase built in. You can see your delay comp and your trim, which is very handy. You got master tape, which is a a Luna specific thing, you can actually use their tape emulations, which I'm currently using the Studer A800 on my drum tracks. And then I have console. Console is their new API vision console emulation. So 
on all the tracks. If you hold Option and click in, you can see your input section of the console. Dyne is the dynamic section where you got your gate expander, compressor limiter, and then over on the EQ, you can use the API EQ and you can actually even pick the type of EQ by selecting type. So you get the 560s and then I believe these are the 550Bs. Now, if we look at our inserts, you can see the plugins that I have here. I'm using, of course, the Universal Audio 1176 on the kick, on the snare. I have the Neve 1084 for a little bit of that Neve sound on top of it. My overheads, I'm using the Manly Verimu compressor, which is really, really fun for drums. And then this, if you guys haven't used this, this is so rad. This is the SPL Transient Designer. And it is, I'm just sucking all the attack out and exaggerating the sustain on my room mics. Now I actually took my room mics and put them out in the living room while I was drumming, which is why you can kind of hear my the shower running and my wife talking to my son while I'm playing drums. Typically, if I'm recording, I'm not gonna do, that's not happening. But uh, the drums just sounded so cool with the mics out there. So let's check this out. You hear them talking? Let's go ahead and listen to some of these drums. These are the close mics on the kit in this room. Super tight, really controlled, beautiful. And we add in this room mic, which is wild. This is the room mic on its own. And then everything together. Pretty awesome. This was literally just an impromptu, me screwing around, playing some all-time low. I threw some mics out in the living room. You can literally hear the shower running because I'm just doing this for fun. But I used all of the Unison pre's that are built into the Apollo X interfaces, going into Luna, using the new API Vision Console, which sounds so rad. Really great that it's all just built into the software. There's a bunch of beautiful instruments that you can add on, a bunch of different features, obviously, that you can purchase from Universal Audio and build up your rig. Absolutely love it. Great job, Universal Audio, if you guys are looking to pick these up. Obviously, links for all this stuff down in the description. It's a great way to support my channel, and I genuinely wouldn't make this video or talk about this stuff if I didn't personally use it and believe in it. I've used a lot of different other products and I just happen to want what I think is the best and the best for me and what I'm doing. And if you guys have seen the studio tours, you guys have seen these in almost every single studio that I go to. They're absolutely great. So again, links in the description if you guys are looking to pick these up. If you use the link to purchase one of these interfaces, it's a great way to support the channel. They're affiliate links. They help me, they support Sweetwater, they obviously Universal Audio loves it. So thank you guys for watching this. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments. I'm a big fan. There's a million other things that I wanna get into, but I don't want this video to take forever. By the way, if you're still here and you made it this far, thank you. Seriously, thank you. The reason I'm making this is because I talk to my friends and people that I know about getting this and it's hard to just put everything into one conversation and to have that conversation a thousand times so i figured i'd just make a great video putting all of it here so if you made it this far let me know down in the comments what you're using if you have any of these what your favorite uad plugins are make sure to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this obviously smash the like button for the youtube algorithm and i will see you in the next video peace